1 Samuel chapter 9. Now there was a man of Benjamin, tribe of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, the son of Abel, the son of Zeor, the son of Becherah, the son of Aphir, a Benjaminite. Well, we had a problem with the Benjaminites in the last chapter, last few chapters of Judges. A mighty man of power. He had a son whose name was Saul. A choice young man and goodly. His looks, his character. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. For his shoulders and upward he was higher than any of the people. Uh, chapter 10, verse 23. Chapter 10, verse 23. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among his people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders upward. So this is a tall Jew. In height. They're usually short. And the asses of Kish. Saul's father were lost. All right, we're going to do a little comparing in this chapter about Saul and another particular man. 1 Samuel 16, 11. Ooh, 16, 11. 1 Samuel 16, 11. That's a number. 1 <clears throat> Samuel 16, 11. He had asses. Asses are stubborn. So I'm told. I never. I don't think I ever. Yeah, I think I see one donkey in my life. Maybe two. First Samuel sixteen eleven, and Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here any of thy children? He said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. We got a father's name Jesse. We got a man that has sheep. And not asses. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till we have till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, it was all a beautiful countenance. That's David. A goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. A good comparisons between Saul and David. David's of Judah. David is a shepherd. David never lost any sheep as far as the Bible records. Matter of fact, he fought a bear and a lion over his sheep. So 1 Samuel 9, 3, the asses of Kish, saw, of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. Kind of irresponsible. But you remember the book of Judges, how many times people found asses? There was a family, they found asses out in the wilderness. They found out asses out in this place. Here, the first king of Israel loses. Lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with me. Arise, go seek the asses. I would think maybe commonsensical. Look for him anyway. And he passed through Mount Ephraim. And passed through the land of Shalachia, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalom, and there they found there they were not. And he passed through the land of Benjaminites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return. He's given up. Tired of searching. Least my father leave caring. First and last time that word shows up. Caring. Only time in the Bible that word shows up. For the asses. Uh, you know what I said? And take thought for us. God, my father, he's not going to think about the asses no more. He's going to think about us. And said to behold now. 
There is in this city a man of God. How come Saul didn't know that? The servant is speaking. There is in the city a man of God, and he is honorable man. Speaking about Samuel. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. 100% profit. Let us go thither. For eventually he can show us our way that we should go. Let's talk about Samuel. Look at Deuteronomy 18.20. Oh, I got an itchy one. You're on me 18.20. It says, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that he shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thy heart, How shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Well, the servant of Saul said that's not Samuel. Samuel's a prophet, and it comes to pass. He's not a false prophet. And they're speaking about Samuel. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels. So here they are on a journey. They don't know how far they're, they're going. They don't know how long they got. But the morsels of victuals that they have has already been eaten. There's no ration. What if they were to start running into problems as they start heading home? They had no food. The bread is spent in our vessels. And there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? What have we? You know what he's doing? He's looking at his servant and saying, what are you going to give? I ain't got nothing. And the servant answered Saul again. So you see, it was the servant, verse 6. Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver, silver is the redemption, that will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. Here's a servant. He's just a servant. The one that's over him has nothing. The servant's got money. Wow. The roles are reversed. Before time in Israel, parentheses, this is a little side note, pay attention, it's important. When a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come and let us go to the seer, see her, he sees something. For he that is now called a prophet, capital B, was before time called a seer, capital S. So what's a prophet? It's a seer. What's a seer? He can see into the future by God. Revelation by God. That's John the Apostle with the book of Revelation. By the authority of the angel of Jesus, which was sent by Jesus, which was sent by God. Then said Saul to his servant, Well said, come, let us go. So they went unto the city where the man of God was. All right, we'll take your money. We'll spend your money. 2 Samuel 24, 24. 2 Samuel 24, 24. Yeah, I'm sorry if my nose, I mean, my voice sounds great. My noise, no. <laughs> Probably so fine, maybe my ears. Second Samuel twenty four twenty four. Let's look at David. Second Samuel twenty four twenty four. And the king said to Aramnim, Aramnimah, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee 
at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. So David brought the session floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. David said, hey, it's going to come out of my pocket. You say, well, what could Saul have done? Gone home, got some money, checked on with his dad, say, dad, we're okay. Uh, servant guy here, he's got a great idea. I'm going to bring something to the, to the seer. Oh, okay. But it's okay that someone else's money. Saul is great for the government that's coming up. We can do all kinds of things with someone else's money. Don't you see that in the government? Verse 11, chapter 9. And as they went up the hill to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water. They said unto them, Is the seer here? They're going down to the well. This happens frequently in the Bible, where men of God, where people of the Bible, meet women at a well. Jesus done it, John chapter 4. The first time that the Lord, the, the, the angel of the Lord shows up, it's to Hagar at a well. And that's also a 1611. So mark these places where these women show up going into a well. And Saul and the servant are on their way to Samuel. This was a common thing for the women. They did not have plumbing and hot and cold water. And they answered them and said, He is, behold, he is before you. He's up ahead. Make haste now. Hurry up, go see him. For he is came today to the city. Just came today. For there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. There's no temple in Jerusalem yet. God has not established his name in one particular city yet. Though the ark should be at Shiloh. And as soon as he be come into the city, ye shall straightway find him before he go up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he come. Because he does bless the sacrifice, and afterwards they eat that be bidden. First time that show, that word shows up, bidden, who's been invited. Now therefore get you up, for about this time you shall find him. Look at the invitation by these women. And they went up into the city. And when they were come into the city, behold, Samuel came out against them. For to go up to this high place. He, Samuel runs into these two. As he's going into the city. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear. A day before Sam, uh, excuse me, Saul came. I mean, let me try it again. Now the Lord has told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came. Saying. Alright, that gives us some insight. God spoke in the ear. Samuel. Yes. And in the ear of Samuel, verse 16. Tomorrow about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin. And thou shalt anoint him to be captain, not king, captain. We call it commander-in-chief. Of the military forces and only to a few years recently have we've had men in that office who hasn't even been no military service at all i'm not gonna get on that but also learn the fact is that god spoke to samuel saul has no idea what's going on saul and his servant wants to go up to samuel and ask about the asses God whispers in Samuel's ear, that man's coming, that's the king. He'll be captain over my people, Israel. So, see, my people, Israel, that's God speaking. Israel are God's people. 
that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. Not save the people from their from hell. Not to save people to go to heaven, but from the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. Uh, that was chapter 8. Chapter 8. And when Samuel saw Saul, <laughs> that's going to be a tongue twister from now on. Saul, Saul. The Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of. Look at that explanation point. Isn't that interesting? Behold, the man whom I spoke of. Why did God have to shout that? That is an explanation point put there by the Holy Spirit. Why? Samuel had no problem hearing the Lord before. Is it a possibility that God, hey, he can't be, God can't be excited because chapter 8, he said they rejected me and asked him for it. I don't understand the explanation point, but there it is. This same Saul shall reign over my people. This is the direct will of God that this is the king, and God is not asking anybody to vote, is he? It's Saul, and it's going to be Saul. I don't care what you guys say. That's the one. Go vote all you want. Go put all your ballot boxes and all your things in the ballot boxes. All right, fine. I'll tell you what. I'll make those ballot boxes say Saul is the king. As Proverbs says, into the lap goes a lot, and out the dispensation comes the Lord. I believe the Lord will change the ballot boxes of people who vote, so God will put the president that he wants in office, never mind what you want. God wanted Trump in the president's office today as much as he wants Obama our previous president for two years, Clinton, the Bushes, all the presidents have been put in that office according to the Bible by God. And maybe God will put the next president of the United States, Hillary Clinton, if you don't like it, you don't touch her, and however you feel, maybe God will do it. He didn't ask anybody. He didn't even ask Samuels permission or what he thought about it. that's the man you're going to know that's the man you're going to put the oil on his head that's the first one Saul will be the first king officially put in the office as the commander the captain over my people reign over my people then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said tell me I pray thee where the seers house it Samuel is standing right in the gate and Saul can't go by him. Saul is approaching the city. He's coming through the gate and there's Samuel. He doesn't even know what he looks like. Hasn't seen him on television. There's no trading cards with Samuel's picture on it. There are no posters of Samuel and the prophets for the bedroom. He has never seen Samuel. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me onto the high place. Go up there. Go, go to up there. Go before me. You follow. I'll follow. You lead. For ye shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let thee go. And will tell thee all that's in thy heart. Now look at that. Are you the seer? Are you the prophet? Are you Samuel? Yeah. All right. Go on up there, and we're going to have dinner together. What's going on here? And this is played out with Joseph and his brothers. And more so that when he had his brothers come and dine with him, he laid out the table by their birth ranks. And they're looking at each other like, what is going on here? 
But Samuel already knows what Saul does not know. And do you realize in our life, as we live for God, as we don't live for God, whether we're saved or lost, we can be doing things that God has already prescribed for us to do and be and act upon without even knowing it. Had the asses got, not gotten lost, Saul would never come to Samuel. Had there never been taxes, Mary would not have been in Bethlehem to give birth to her son, according to the prophecy. And as for thy asses, all right, go on forward. Oh yeah, by the way, those asses that were lost three days ago, ago is the first time that word shows up. Set not thy mind on them. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. For they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee? And on all that father's house? Now that's weird for Saul. Why does everybody care about me and my father's house for? I just came asking for about a bunch of dumb asses. And you can imagine as they're walking on it, but the asses have been found. Who told them? That's a sign to Saul. Because Jews require a sign. Are you really the seer? Yeah, move ahead. Hey, the ass has been found. And you can just imagine looking at his servant like, did you tell him? No. Did you tell him? <laughs> no. All I asked was he was the man. And in the service saying, I told you it was a seer. I told you. He knew why we were here. And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjaminite? Remember Judges 19 and 20? Of the smallest of the tribes of Israel. Remember Judges 19 and 20? And my family, the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin. Wherefore thou speakest thou so to me. He's humble. He's humble like David, but he's going to get into pride. But right now he speaks right. What are you doing, Samuel? What right do I even have to speak to you? And I'm going to have dinner with you? All right, you said, don't worry about the asses. They've been found. I ought to just go home right now. Here's a piece of silver my servant has. That's all I'm worthy. And Samuel took Saul and his servant and brought them into the parlor and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden. So here's a room, a parlor. Here's a bunch of men going to sit down with Samuel for a meal and at the chief spot of this table Saul and his servant are placed Saul does not belong there right now and you got to wonder because he said on whom is all the desire of Israel is it not on thee and on all thy father I wonder if Samuel told these people in this room what's going to happen I don't know. And brought them in the power and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden higher than anybody, which are about 30 persons. That's an interesting number, 30. And Samuel said unto the cook, see that cook? Verse 24, and the cook. That's the only two places the word cook shows up. And when we read last night in 8, 13, and to be cooks, the only time the word cook shows up in cooks, the only two places it be is in relation to the king, the office of the king. 
Now, Cook is only two places in the Bible here, 23 and 24. That's quite interesting. Because when you mention a, a family and the wife cooks for her husband, what is the contrast of the first word showing up? And right here, the only words being shown for the king. Kind of interesting. Some people think that's perversion. Some people think that's male chauvinistic. That's Bible. That's the only place this show up. Nowhere else. 66 books. Bring the portion. Now watch this one. Bring the portion which I gave thee. Of which I said unto thee. Set it by thee. Samuel hands him a portion. And says here. Keep this up. And we're not done yet. We're getting to verse 24. But he goes to the cook and says, hey, save this piece. Now watch. And the cook, second last place, took up the shoulder. Samuel is a priest. That shoulder is the best part of the lamb or the ox that was been given that has been on that altar. Or it has been a tithe of the lambs or the sheep. That is the priest's portion of the meal, the best. And Samuel said, that is my meal. Tell the cook to take that, put it off to the side. And I'm going to give it to the king of Israel. And the king and the prophet, the seer, are going to sit down. Oh yeah, the, the Levite, we read last night. It's going to sit down and have the meal prepared by God by the people now isn't that interesting that's the best part of the animal I, I looked up online and that which was on it upon it except for the fat no fat so everything to deal with the soldier that the, yeah, the shoulder of that animal except the fat and set it before Saul the best part goes to Saul. And Samuel said, Behold that which is left. Set it before thee, and eat. For unto this time has it been kept for thee since I said, I invited the people. So I'm wondering if Saul told them what's going on. The only one that does not know what's going on, I think, and I can be wrong, is Saul and the servant. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. Man, that's an honor. And when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. That's where they hang out. It's like a porch up there. Peter was on the porch of the house having a dream. And they rose up early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. Now, does that not sound like Peter? And the sheet went up, and Peter go? I don't know. Sent thee away. And Saul rose, and they went on both of them, he and Samuel abroad. And as we were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid thy servant pass on before us. Tell him to go up. Go ahead of us. Don't need him here. Bid thy servant to pass on before us. Parenthesis, for you know, and he passed on. So there's only Samuel and Saul. But stand out still a while, that I may show you thee, the word of God. Now that's another interesting fact. And verse uh, eight twenty two, and the Lord said to Samuel nine fifteen, and the Lord had told Samuel, and the Lord said to Samuel, and verse ten of chapter eight, and Samuel told all the words of the Lord. <coughs> Samuel kept the word. Samuel is responsible for the word. He is very, very 
assured in the word of God and held it properly. I told him 918. 918. Okay. Tomorrow about this time, send a man out of the land yep. of Benjamin. He'll anoint to be So, in the next chapter, we're going to look at the movement of the king. And Saul, let's look at Saul now because we're going to get into him. Unlike David, he is humble. But already now, he's already sat in the chief spot. <laughs> he's already had an audience with Samuel himself. <laughs> and then this rascal is going to get rascal her. <laughs> We're going to see some characteristics in Saul that, you know, all his things, I'm sure, the glory of God. But Saul is an interesting study, and we're going to compare it to David back and forth. 